Welcome back to Signals on IT1.3 Lagos Talks. And this morning we'll be looking at preparing for the future. And um, I have with me my egg ball. <laughs> That's what I'm going to put you because she literally was looking for me all through. Um, to be part of the program, you can send us a WhatsApp message 009 234 We're talking preparing for the future. Last week, last day, I we talked about guessing your PVC. I hope you've got it. Um, this morning we'll be looking at somebody who wrote um, two editions to her younger self. It's called To My Younger Self. But before that, I have with me a serial entrepreneur. She serves as a... I, I have to... Uh, 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 <laughs> she's, she says she's not ready. Let me do this. Let me start on all existing protocols. Please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, she serves as a non-executive board director on several boards and... Um, the list is endless, but because she has instructed me, I'd have to. She's the author of To My Younger Self, um, a book that was nominated in 2018 as Top 20 Nigeria Book Nonfiction Category by the Channels Book Club. Over the years, she has developed a keen interest in the younger generation by mentoring and on capacity building and personal development. She features, she's everywhere. She's everywhere. She's somebody you want to listen to. I have with me Adirunke Onodeko. Welcome to Signals and welcome back. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here this morning. Yes. I'm glad that she agreed to let me talk on her time. <laughs> um, you have to. Uh -uh, why wouldn't you? <laughs> we have this book. Right. And we're talking preparing for the future. While we're talking off, uh, and you, you said you wanted to write as many more, more books where people, where the younger generation would have more time to read something instead of them getting confused now we're in the gen z's where everybody <laughs> <it's me calling. laughs> we're in the gen z's where um apart from the gen z's every time people wake up in the morning and say what am i going to do today they're looking at their careers they're looking at what they need to do a lot of time they've gone to school every year the university is always turning out um different graduates and they are stuck with what to do tell us why you wrote the book to my younger self okay so um thank you for tuning in this morning yeah i'm excited to introduce you to the books to my younger self <laughs> to my you. younger self uh short stories of various contributors but I categorize my contributors as credible contributors. Mm. People who you're not going to find out that their story was one kind, you know, in the background. They're thoroughly checked out. Their stories pan out. They've been doing what they're doing consistently, and they're credible people in society. Some of them you know, some of them you don't know, but the thread amongst them is that they're successful, very successful. And um, success has... D different definitions for different people for somebody it might be a great mother for somebody the pinnacle of their of their career for some other person they're good providers for their family so everybody's definition of success is different mm. so the exciting thing about this book and why i wrote it is that i've been mentoring for over 30 years and i find out that there's a there's a lot of confusion people don't know what they want to do they're not quite sure if they're going to make it and so people are trying their hands on so many different things so they need people to guide them as hmm, maybe you should try this so with the years of experience that i have had in all kinds of sectors oil and gas manufacturing consulting in government my personal business in farming agribusiness i decided to write a book as a mentoring guide to young people and not so young people so they're in the first book, there were 24 stories. In this second book, there are 40 different stories of people sharing how they got to their places of success. So the choices of courses they took, how their parents shaped them, how they disciplined themselves, the kind of habits they have. So there's so much in it. Um, we have over 1,920 years of experience. Mm. If you add the two books, that's 64 different people and an average of 25 years experience for each person if you multiply that that is 1920 years of experience so there's no way you will read book one and two <laughs> and you will not be a a guru a success guru 
So that's why we've written the book. So you can find examples of what people did that didn't work, what people did that worked, and how you can now shape your life based on those things. You don't have to make all the mistakes. Some other people have made mistakes. Mm -hmm. You can just learn from those mistakes and use that as a leverage to move up. So we want to give you a shortcut to success. That's basically <laughs> I, what this book I, I, is. I like, I like what you said about shortcuts to success. But there's something you said that, that um, got my attention is discipline. Now, in the stories that you, the 40 stories, 40 life stories, um, and for people that are listening, there's something that we sort of lack is, you know, some that are, they'll say that they've given birth to you, you also have to rebet yourself. And discipline seems to be lacking. Okay, so discipline is one of the critical things that cuts across all the stories. It's hard to find a successful person that's indisciplined. And um, because I said success has different definitions, you might find somebody is disciplined in one area of their life, but they're not disciplined in another area of their life. So you get some people who, because of how good they are in their field, mm. they quickly rise to the top. Mm. But it's the discipline that will keep you there. Uh, we know some presidents that made it through elections <laughs> and they get there and then they don't stay there for very long because they just don't know how to comport themselves. They don't know how to discipline. So discipline is a critical ingredient in success. It starts from a young child. Children that you tell when you wake up in the morning, brush your teeth, have your bath and make your bed. You see some children within a few weeks, they've blended and they're doing it diligently. You see some that for 10 years, <laughs> you're still reminding them every morning. It's something worth working on. It comes naturally to some people. For some people, they struggle with it, but I will tell you for nothing, struggle at it because it will pay off in the long run. Okay. Um, 40 stories. What was the, what was the one story that intrigued you? Oh my goodness. As, um, as we were getting back our stories from the contributors, I was blown away because most I actually know all of the people in all the books. Wow. So I thought I knew them and I knew their stories. So their stories came back and the way they processed the information that and the things that happened to them in their lives were really outstanding. You know, there's a story of a young man who decided he wanted to further his education and he was going to have to fund it. And he had always dreamt of going to school abroad. So he sold everything he had in Nigeria and embarked on this journey. When he got to the US, it was not as easy as he thought it would be, but he was a good man. He had burnt all his bridges linking him back to Nigeria wow. before he, he had nothing to come back to, so he had to stick it out. And you know what? He made a resounding success of that trip. So there is value in burning bridges sometimes. There's another person whose life had gone perfectly. A lady went to school abroad, came back, got married, and then she has a child who has a challenge and she thought her world was going to fall apart. And she managed to get herself together, got the support she needed, built a stronger community of family and friends and forged forward. And there is nothing she set her heart to do that she hasn't accomplished in spite of. So there's so many stories. I mean, people who started off in companies, they will send them to a faraway place where nobody even hears of them for two or three years. They don't go there and complain for three years. They go there and they continue building themselves or building themselves up. And then the company says, wow, this is talent you have in this place. Mm. They bring you back to headquarters. You are now the boss of something very big. So they're outstanding stories. You will find three, four, five stories that are like, wow, I can see myself in these stories. You'll see parts of other people's stories that are like, if I have this challenge, now I know what to do. Mm. Life will not take you by surprise if you read this book. This is like <laughs> having 64 mentors, very tenured people who have been up the mountain, gone into the valley, <laughs> gone through rocks, crawled around in the dark, been in forests, they've come out shiny on the other side. So you cannot but learn from these people. So it's a really good resource book to have. It's a good book for parents to buy to their young children. It helps you plan for a future. You begin to see the attributes you need to have. You begin to see the courses you need to take. You begin to see the trends that people went through to get to where they are today. So mm. it makes, it, it shortens your journey. It, it does. It shortens the journey. Um, you're going to read one of the stories. Uh, I don't want you to read one of the stories. Okay. And um, pick any. No, you pick one. Oh, okay. Just open up the book uh, and pick a story. Okay, so me. we have to. How do, how do we roll the you know, you know how people read their Bibles when you're a new Christian? Yes. You just open uh, it and say, God, you have to speak to me from this page. <laughs> and he usually okay, does. Okay, let's, let's look at um, Falaka Shweto. Wow, Falaka's story is the one I just finished talking about. 
Kwake is the CEO of Ikeja Electric PLC. <laughs> wonderful one, wonderful woman. Great mother, excellent administrator, a great CEO and a child of God. She has twin boys. Her children are being deliberately I mean, if I, the, her boys are just, I pray over those children that my own twins too should be like her boys. They are very, very diligent in the things they are doing. So let me just read an excerpt from Falake's story. Yeah. I studied banking and finance, but never worked in the financial sector. Learning, especially from older people or younger in terms of age and position is critical. This will help in terms of relationships. Curiosity about their success and often asking more questions has helped me develop myself and learn more. Being deliberate in the choice of friends is critical. Make sure you surround yourself with people who have diverse knowledge base. You've got a wealth of experience to offer. One of the quotes we got from her story was, don't spend too much time dwelling on the past you can't change it failure is not the end of the road rock bottom is the perfect place to rebuild armed with experiences lessons and wisdom that's what this book entails mm. it gives you a lot of life experiences you hear authentic stories that are relatable this is not a story of somebody who lives in america who says this is nigeria the people in this book they <laughs> survived this nigeria that people are jackpying jack from so if people can survive this nigeria it's worth reading their story to find out mm. what exactly did they do to make a success even in this because nigeria is tough hmm. so um falake talks about having a group of people around you that have that have wide and diverse knowledge bases. So you have lawyer friends, you have doctor friends, you have people in technology. So the day you have a medical challenge, you know exactly who, who to call. call. The day somebody is telling that they're going to sue you, you know your lawyer friend that you're going to call and say, hey, this is what happened. They would advise you. They would point you in the right direction. You need to build a community, a tribe. Hmm. As a young, I'm an older mom. I have very young children. I have a tribe of people I call my Oga Bruce. They're in their 30s and their 40s. But anything I need done or I need to know about children, who does good children's party, where can I get children's clothes, they know everything. So everybody has to build a tribe around yourself. So don't wait till you're in your 30s or 40s. If you're 15 or 16 and listening, make sure you pick your friends carefully. Pick people yeah. who are going somewhere. People who you say, ah, oh, we went to primary school together in my we have a group called um the 1978 set we graduated from primary school okay. in 1970 we meet three four five times a year yeah, okay. and everybody is doing different things everybody is useful in one way or the other build strong tribes it's important and don't forget don't dwell on the past it's gone hmm. build up and use it as a catapult into your future learn the mistakes but fail forward I talk a lot about failing forward. And education outside the classroom is very important. Older people will tell you stories. They will tell you their experiences. You will learn from it. It gives you a lot of wisdom. It helps you maneuver in this very tricky situation. But you know what? There's nothing that is going to happen that has not happened before. There's a reverse saying that there's no way how you have clothes, that you have as many raggedy clothes as an older person. Because they've been through a forest, they've been through fights, they've been through struggles. That's why they have raggedy clothes. So you too, instead of trying to acquire a whole wardrobe of raggedy clothes, go and figure out how those raggedy clothes came to be and learn from it. So you don't have to go through as much fights or struggles as the people ahead of you. Give me back to my book. Thank you. Now, I hope that helped somebody this morning. Um, so there's something that I picked from her story while we were talking is having a tribe of people now one of the major things they say we don't burn bridges i heard you to saying saying that the value in burning bridges now away from that is how do we begin to manage relationships yes i can call you my egbon and say okay fine i can come to you but how then do you manage relationships knowing that you might always come back to that door okay so one of the things that i actually because i coach and i mentor mm. i help people build Help people understand personal ecosystems. Mm -hmm. So everybody has an ecosystem, and that means that you have a world around you. Mm -hmm. So you are in the center of your ecosystem. Who are the 20 people who are closest to you? Everybody should have a list of their 20. If they said, ah, we are going to Asorob, we're taking you to Asorob, but you can only bring 20 people. Who are those 20 people you will take along with you? Those are the people in the inner caucus of your ecosystem. Mm -hmm. They have to be people who are reliable. 
people who are dependable, people who are honest, who will give you honest feedback, people who are going somewhere, not people who are dragging you back, people who are pushing you forward, who criticize you constructively so that you can consistently be your best. Hmm. If you now do your list of 20, and you find out that all these people are just partners. Oh, let's go to a party. Ah, okay. did you see what your neighbor wore? If you need to start doing something about it now. Yeah. If you find out that there are people who are not so close to you that have those attributes that we've just talked about, you have to start finding ways of bringing them in closer and exporting the ones that are not valuable. Send them to Kaduna, send them to Midugu, <laughs> send them to Republic of Benin, send them to Chad or to, I don't know, wherever. Mm. But bring the ones that are valuable close to you. For example, if you want to become a public speaker, mm. how many public speakers do you have in your clothes? Because Iron sharpened iron. You need people who are like-minded and people who you can aspire to be around you. So that you're watching what they do. You're learning from them consistently. That's what gets you to your goal. Hmm. Hold on a second. Um, Favor from Valinde is asking, the stories in the book, are they fictions or real life stories? Oh, real life stories. <laughs> real life. The names of the people are there. The companies they work for are there. I'm sure if you search for them on Google, mm. you will find their stories or you'll find some of their stories. If you look on LinkedIn, you'll find them. If you check on Google and you just try, you know, to find, you will find that these people are on, they're on Instagram, they're on Facebook, they're on Twitter. They're all real people. So 64 real people who have shared generously part of their life stories to help people coming behind them be successful. Um, you're going to read another person. Um, his name is um, Prof. Kenneth Amici. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so I'll take professor one more. Kenneth Amici <laughs> is a professor of sustainable finance and the chair in transitional government Global South at the European University Institute. Mm -hmm. He's based in Florence, Italy. He was a young man who, oh, I'll just tell you, just um, yeah. a recap, who wanted to become a priest. Okay. So he did go to seminary and at some point decided it wasn't for him. So I started as a child with a desire to become a priest. At 11, I was admitted into the Catholic seminary. I did my secondary education there. I went on to study philosophy, being the only option available at the seminary. Leaving the seminary at age 22, after 11 years, I had to reorient myself and carve a new path for my life. At that time, I would joke and tell my friends that I would need another 11 years to re-engineer me. This led me to apply for a master's degree in psychology at the University of Nigeria, Nsuka. My goal was to become a professor, and he did become a professor. Uh, although I didn't have the resources to fund my studies, I was hopeful and told myself that all I needed was an opportunity to prove myself. So this is um, a young man, didn't come from any background where his parents could send him to school abroad, but he made it to school abroad. He made it into, you know, he was in Edinburgh. I'll just read this little part. When I set the big goal, my salary was less than 20,000 Naira. I had never traveled overseas. I had no idea what being abroad looked like. I couldn't even afford to study abroad, but for some reason, I had a vision that I would get there. This goal became a reality within five years. So it didn't happen overnight. Okay. So when people say that, oh, I want to do this, or oh, I've been trying, I ask them, well, how long have you been trying? They say that, oh, the last six months, that's all I've been working on. This is somebody who for five years okay. was working on sending himself. And he did, he got a scholarship from the British Council, the Shipping Scholarship. And he did go abroad. So it's important to understand that. Give yourself a clear vision. Stick with your vision. Pray over it, meditate over it, and surround yourselves with people who will give you the information, the advice, the push to help you reach your, your goal. And you will get there and you will surpass it. Okay. Now, because this is, and, and I like why you, that you read this story. It's somebody who decided I wanted to go abroad. When the era where people are living all over, in droves, yes. right? And they're going there, they don't know anybody. The people are leaving the country. <laughs> <laughs> the next moment, they're like, your friend has gone. Right, my makeup uh, person has gone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now they're going abroad, and how did they? How do they begin to find their own fit? Because okay. uh, you sometimes people say that it's tough over there, mm. and also it is story. hard. It's hard everywhere. So we shouldn't discount the fact that changing location changes life. Life happens to people everywhere. So you leave yeah. Nigeria where you you supposedly aren't getting a good pay. And you move abroad and then you move to a country where you get a much better pay but you know what you will pay your full tax 
You will pay radio tax if you have a radio in your house. You will pay TV tax, TV license if you have it. You will pay pack. You will pay to park your car on your street. So life, there, you know, it's give and take. Mm. And then if they are hungry abroad, then you cannot go to somebody's house and they will offer you food. Is it like they'll offer you? They will offer you a cup of tea. And the owner of the house will wait till you leave before they eat. So don't think it's like in Nigeria when you get to somebody's house and you haven't eaten. They'll just say, ah, and we're about to so get an extra plate for They've counted how many pieces of meat are in their pot. <laughs> it's the number of people in the house. So it's different. But the thing, the good thing is that mm. if you've made up your mind and you want to move abroad or you want to do anything in general, surround yourself with people who can give you real advice and good advice. Real advice if you're real going advice. abroad, let them tell you what it's going to take. Talk to somebody who has moved, that you mm. know from your tribe, that will tell you honestly how it is. Some people have moved and it wasn't a good experience, but you know what? They're not going to be the last one, so they will encourage you. Like, when you come, you come and see how it is. So come. There is something they call in London called early momo. Early momo is people who go to work. They start work at like 3 a.m. Washing bodies in the mortuary, sweeping streets, cleaning the trains, trains and the tubes for people who are going to start getting on them at like five o'clock in the morning to go to work. But you know what? They're happy they're abroad. They can send their children to better schools mm. than they would have been able to afford. So you have to weigh the pros and cons. Everything has advantages and disadvantages. So you have to have people, real people around you who will tell you. Your emphasis real. on real people. Real people. Why? Real people. <laughs> because there are a lot of people who are your friends, but... They don't, have, they don't have any vested interest in you. So if you fail, they will stop being your friend. If you succeed, they will continue being your friend. You need people who are going to be with you through thick and thin. And that way, you know, they have um, every reason to want you to succeed. Mm. People like me, I want you to succeed. <laughs> they have every reason to want you to succeed. It signals that we're talking about praying for the future and reading stories, 64 stories, um, a collection of, to my younger self, a collection of inspiring stories of career, family, business, journey if you have questions or comments you can call us no more signals marketplace we're um, talking preparing for the future numbers to call or whatsapp is 009 234 or call us 009 191 hello so good morning hello good morning good morning your name or where you calling us from thank you so much for this opportunity thank you well you see i i live around the country Okay. And I was, I, I kept on because the new generation are not reading that much. Okay, reading. Huh? So I live around the Fortuna, I, I am so interested in this book. And I have, I just wish that this would be a constant uh, reminder that our destiny is an archive. Mm. And especially for the young ones, how can we get this kind of book accessible and affordable to them okay. so that we can build this nation? Mm. That, I, I, I've been talking to one of my boys this year, and I've been encouraging him that you see your life is in your hands. And in fact, I told him specifically that you need to build people around you that, that is interested in your development. Mm. That how can you live your life with those people that are not, they were, they were just in their house and they are not even having anything in their own future. Mm. So, make this book available mm. around this place of our life. Thank you. Um, please kindly send us a WhatsApp message, um, 009-234-5913. Please send us a WhatsApp message so that we can get to you. Yes. Okay, so um, I'll just touch on a few things that he mentioned. A lot of young people are not reading anymore, but the great thing about this book, because young people, the concentration span is it's very nice short. Happens. But the great thing about this book is not, the book has four pages of one person's story, three pages of, so you can read a story and put your book down mm -hmm. come back to it another day read another so it's not a continuum mm. so it's a very easy to read book that's one two because of this issue of young people not reading mm. we started um putting together a podcast every week about four minutes of us telling you things that would help you develop yourself for a successful life in future another mm. thing we're doing is that we um put out a notice when we launched the book last week 
for people to sponsor us to go into schools, to put these books into libraries, libraries of local governments, libraries of secondary schools, libraries of universities. We had so far within the last week, about seven different people have reached out to us. One person um, went to Comprehensive, um, Comprehensive High School, Ayetoro. She's yeah. going to buy some books for her alma mater. So she's going to send some books. I went to Federal Government Girls College, Chagamu. I'm donating some books there. So we're going to make sure these books penetrate schools, universities and public libraries and we're going to um we're talking to a couple of companies um mm. who are inviting us to come and talk to their young staff so we will have the book with us and their companies will be buying it for them at a discounted rate so there are a lot of opportunities for people to get their hands on this book and we're still looking for more ways to make sure that every young person has access to these books okay um, the something he said that caught my attention. He said, "Your life is in your hands. Your destiny is in your hands." Sometimes I think because Nigerian culture has a way of see your 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 own. How then? And and that's the truth for a lot of parents who sometimes. And, and I don't blame parents because I, I, when I look at parents, I, I see that they're limited by the information of their own time. Now, what what they're telling the kids is you're on your own, and then the child is saying, "How do I navigate this? You are on your own conversation." <laughs> okay, so when people say that you know there isn't a lot of information out there, there is not mm. this, there's not. I ask the ladies, young ladies especially, that know how to do makeup. How did you learn this thing? They tell you they went to YouTube. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay, what do you use your data for? Oh, they stop the <laughs> web. Everything is online. If you have a desire inside of you to learn something, to know more about a topic, mm. there are resources online and they are free of charge. So if you are interested in things, just go to YouTube, put in a keyword and you will see resources. Some you have to pay for, some are free, but you will get the basics. And once you start building up and the interest is there, doors will open. Okay. Um, the number to call is 009-191-3913. Hello, good morning. Okay, that zero eight zero nine two three four five nine one three or zero one five one five one nine one three um someone is sending a question saying is studying abroad different from dakwa <laughs> well, because from the last story mm. the prof needed to go abroad to get a scholarship to study away from nigeria um no he went to unsuka he went to he went to Unsuka. He went to he did his first degree in Nigeria. He had done his secondary school at the seminary. Did his university at University of Nigeria Unsuka. I wanted to further his studies, okay. so he, that was why he moved abroad. And I mean, he's done very well in the in academia. Now, uh, there's something I need to ask you, um, because you have you have experience in different sectors. What should fresh graduates expect with a new culture, new work culture? Especially Gen Z. Wow. Every day I read articles that tell us, that, oh, you know, these jobs are going to be extinct in 10 years. Oh, this one will be extinct. There'll be new things. AI, uh, artificial intelligence is taking over. Chant There'll be robots. GPI. You cannot substitute human beings for, okay. in every way. I remember when I was in boarding school doing my A-levels. That was when the computer was becoming a household thing and they were telling us then that nobody will be going to the office anymore because this computer, you can network anybody from anywhere, which is the case that we saw during COVID. But after COVID, the speed at which everybody wanted to reconnect with other human beings, it was, it just, fast. It was fast. Very fast. People wanted to see people. They wanted to talk to people. They wanted to hug people. So I don't think um, technology is going to wipe out completely the role of human beings so some of the skill sets i would tell people apart from your profession or what your personal interests are in career make sure you understand yourself make mm. sure you can work well in a team make sure you're a good communicator make sure you have good writing skills because even if you're going to ask and um, punch something into your robots to do you have to be able to communicate effectively so your robot knows what to do properly <laughs> you know so there are some skills that I don't care how technologically advanced the world gets. Human skills will still count for a lot. So don't underdevelop yourself thinking whatever you want to be in future is going to be wiped out. There will always be people, old school people like me who want people in our office. I don't want a robot in my office. I, don't, I, don't, I want I don't, a human being. I don't human know what you want me to. Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Hello. I can hear you, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. Your, Good morning, ma. Your name or where are you calling us from? I guess. Okay. I'm, call, I'm calling. My name is Tamar Afaradu. 
Okay. Hello, Samuel. Question. Yes. I'm calling from <laughs> Oto State. Okay. Do you have a question for us? Ma? <laughs> Do you have a question for us? Yeah, I... Okay. I, you know what? You know what? Samuel, please send us a WhatsApp message to 0809-234-5913 so that um, we can hear your... I can read your question. Now, for somebody who wakes up at 40 and decides that I have not done anything with my life, what do you have to tell them? <laughs> Great! 40. Uh, the, there is a Yoruba saying that says, whenever you wake up is your morning. Mm. I can tell you off the top of my head four or five very, very successful people internationally and locally that at 40, they still hadn't hit their career that brought them to the light, limelight. Wow. Um, the guy that um, started Kentucky Fried Chicken didn't start till he was in Cornel Sanders till he was in his 60s. Mm -hmm. So don't be worried that some people who started ahead of you. I'll use this Bible story as an analogy. The 11th hour miracle. The husband man who went to the market and brought in workers on, at the first hour. And then at the 11th hour of the day, he still went back to the market and brought additional workers. So when they closed after one hour, he paid everybody the same thing. Mm -hmm. People who had worked 12 hours, people who had worked one hour, everybody got Your plan and your chart is different. So if you haven't figured out what you want to do, and you now know mm -hmm. that I want to turn around from whatever I've been doing. Obviously, what you have been doing in the past wasn't working. One, I will tell you to look for a mentor. Okay. Two, find somebody you can be accountable to. Oh, I want to start learning French. I'm going to do one hour every day. Somebody who can call you and check on you to make sure you are doing. And if you are consistent and diligent, mm. you will find out that you are growing and you start to hit targets of things that are on your plan and you will eventually get back on track and make a, make a success of whatever you choose to do. Mm. Um, nowadays, when some individuals no longer have the patience due to external, to, due to the pressure of external influence, how do you manage to make them focus? Now, where am I going to with this? We are in an era where every, see there's a distraction everywhere. How do we focus on our own focus personally? <laughs> okay, so I have a five-year-old son, mm. and you know he will tell me, "Mama, please, can you do this?" And while I'm doing it, the second and third and fourth and fifth request will come. So we have a slogan. You know, Mama can't do two things at the same time. Mm. Learn to focus on one thing. And I'm not saying that there won't be changes or, or in, instances where you have to abort what you're doing to do something else. But as much as possible, try and give yourself a time frame. I'm going to do this for the next 10 minutes. If anything comes up in that 10 minutes, have mm. a piece of paper and a pen beside you because sometimes we like to deceive ourselves that, oh, I'll forget. If you forget, it wasn't that important. Mm. So write that thing on a sheet of paper and continue what you were doing till that 10 minutes is over. And for whatever reason, if it's an emergency and you have to abort and do something else, write down what you were doing before and try and go back to it mm. when you are done with whatever distracted you. But I don't want to hear things like, oh, my phone or internet. Those ones, switch them off. If you can't control yourself and you're the kind of person that you respond to your phone every time there's a red beep, <laughs> switch off your social media when you're going to work. Okay. Put it back on in the evening. Um, good morning, Mrs. <laughs> I appreciate your program. I'd like to switch my career to project management, but didn't even get a place to volunteer as a trainee. Okay, so what I would advise you to do is go online. There's a, a company called Udemy. Yeah. They run courses, every, you know, all kinds of courses, and they're very, very affordable. Oh, Dam start, Damola, yeah. start taking courses in that area. Once you are able to start putting your certification on your CV or on your profile, you'll find people who are actually looking out for those things. So don't wait till you find a place to intern or a job that is going to help you do the project management. Start taking the courses. And you know what? Project management is in all things. You can start project managing your home. You can start project managing yourself. So you mm. find out where the easy parts are, what the difficult parts are. So when you get the opportunity to now meet up with people who are in that space, you know the right questions to ask them and they can see that you've already started to practice what mm. you're trying to do as a profession. Someone is asking, is it in e-copies? Yes, it's available on Amazon. Okay. Yes, for people who want to buy and it's at a lot of bookstores, mm. you know, locally. No. Um, it signals and we're still talking preparing for the future now really preparing for the future how do we prepare for the future 
Okay, so I personally I'm, now let me ask you because okay. you are really, you thinking of you? No, Mike. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of a lot of people at the same time, and I'm going to ask you because um, thirty years of multi-sectoral profession. That is what you have gotten. Now, if you look back, let me ask you, who wrote to my younger self? Yes. What did you tell your younger self when you got here? I turned my, I looked back and said to my younger self, Ronke, you've done well. Okay. That's, you've done that's well. That's a lot of part of the book. But um, you could have done a lot better. Mm. I started saving very early, but I wasn't investing in the savings. So I was piling up money, but I wasn't leveraging the money to make money. So there are a lot of things that I've learned from. The kind of friends I have now, I was intentional and deliberate about my friends. Not because I knew what I know now, but that was just how my nature was. So if I had known what I know now, oh, there, are, there will be some people that I'll be much closer to than I am now. And there will have been some people that I would have kicked out of my life a lot earlier. So then you will have pluses and you have minuses. The good thing is not to beat yourself over the head about it. There's always room for improvement and the past is gone. The future is still ahead of you. Focus on changes you can make in the future that will get you to a stronger position. Hmm. So for somebody who is listening and saying, okay, how do I prepare for my future? Is that too far-fetched? Um, look at somebody who does not even know what they're doing. They don't have a job. There's nothing, nothing so is happening. So part of the, that person's future is get a job. Okay. That's so if that person's future is get a job, what skills do I have that are sellable? Hmm. What product do I have that I can sell? What service can I render that people will pay for? That's a good place to start. So if it's a product, for example, you want to start selling shoes for children. Where do parents usually buy their children's shoes from? What sort of shoes are people buying? School shoes, home shoes, play shoes, party shoes. What should you do? You now have to start doing some research. Hmm. And all of these things are available online. So I'll say try and start finding places where you can get data from. So you can get online and start doing your research. Okay. One more before we wrap up. And I want you to read one more. So you're going to pick this. I'm not going to pick for you. Okay. Can you pick? <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to open a page and hope I haven't read it. Okay, I'm going to read Dr. Itunu Akinwari's story. I don't know mm. if any of you have heard of Medbury. She is the general manager of Medbury Medical Services. Itunu is a medical doctor, and in her NYSC, she was posted somewhere. Two or three days after she got posted there, the facility folded up. Okay. And everybody disappeared, including the people who are managing this institution. So she was left as a youth copper with a few other staff and Nothing. didn't know what to do so you know what she apparently met with the people who are doing the unwinding of the company or who are trying to sell the business but they didn't tell her because they didn't want her to to leave mm. so they kept winding her up and stringing her along thinking and then one day she told them that she wants to buy the place and they thought oh wow okay. you <laughs> who hasn't made any money doesn't have any money so she was ingenious she had a will and where there is a will there is a way she the um each department she found people who wanted to rent out those departments to be using so if you are a dentist for example and you didn't have a practice you could bring your patients to their dental office use the equipment and they'll charge you a fee that's how she filled up the place before you knew she said they'll make five thousand naira she'll use three thousand out of it to buy um diesel into the generator pay started paying outstanding staff who's um said um who's um um salaries hadn't been paid and that's how the people who are telling thought, wow, this girl has a plan. Wow. She was able to go to the bank, raise funds, and buy the place. And that's how Medbury NYSC. NYSC. So, you know, the stories in okay. here will tell you that there is nothing that is impossible. There is no thing that you've come across. You will find a solution in this book. Because I'm sure a lot of youth couples are thinking, oh, I haven't found a job after NYSC. This is someone, she hadn't even done the NYSC yet. So she was a fresh graduate. And she was able to build a business, a whole medical service company. We should come and look for her. Let me come and look for her. We need so, to hear this story. So, you know, it, it's important. And now, you know, within a year, she was doing medical checks for oil companies. She had started opening up places in Port Harcourt. And they're doing so well now. We use her. I have an aged mom. She's 88. Anytime you need anything medical done for my mom, instead of bonding this 88-year-old man in a car to take my mom to the clinic, 
they have special services. They will send a blood person to your house. The person will take the blood and they will send you the results electronically and bill you. So there, is op there are opportunities for everybody. You just have to be ingenious. That's why we've looked for a wide <laughs> area of people who tell stories that are unbelievable. Because, because you hear this and you're thinking, is it possible? possible? This is a real life person. She's alive today. You can ask her questions. You can reach out to her. You can read about her company. And this is done. So I'm glad I got to, I picked it to me. Yeah, I'm glad to. I'm yes. glad to. Um, yes, the opportunities everywhere. Um, so how many more books are we writing now? Oh, there are going to be a lot more books because um, we're finding out that people say, oh, I have an interest in entertainment. I don't even know what to do. So we mm. want to start writing books with maybe like 30 or 40 stories of different people in entertainment. Mm. How did I get into entertainment? Was it from school? Did I study theater arts? Mm. Or was it just a situation where I was going into a shop one day and somebody thought, oh, I like your smile. Will you be in my commercial? And then you <laughs> went into a commercial. Before you knew it, somebody said, be in my movie. Mm. Different people have found their routes through different ways and different means. So we want to start writing specialized books for people who want to do IT, people who are in entertainment, people who are in music, people who are do, you know, doing development agency work, writers, poets, people who are comedians. So that if that is the field where you have a passion, by the time you read 20, 30 stories of how they got into it, you yeah. should be able to plan and yeah. decide yeah, okay, I'm going to use this person's <laughs> method or I'll join these three people's method together mm. and work it and see how it works for me. Okay. My time is up because Kyle is here. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and I will sign that copy for you. <laughs> thank you. Um, um, I so, to show them the, <laughs> so this is what the book looks Perfect. like. And the book one is uh, Mustard, Yellow Color of the same, same look, same feel, same great stories from authentic Nigerians who are telling their stories to Nigeria, to Africa, and to the world. Okay. Um, thank you so much. I didn't recall the record. But I will say thank you, Atiru, okay, because I have home training. Um, <laughs> <laughs> See, we come your way again next week, Saturday. Like she has rightly said, I, I always say, um, create opportunities for people, and then people will be people. Now, I'll just keep saying, there are opportunities everywhere. Mm. Have a wonderful week, and God bless. God bless you. <laughs> Please let Nigerians know I didn't get a copy of it. Be coming down, John. Let me go. <laughs> 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 Thank you.